Hey, 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 everybody. James here from Mortisk Media. We are back again with some more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. And in this one, we're going back into our Blueprint series, and we're going to be going over specifically custom events versus some of the preset events that are within the Unreal Engine Blueprints by default. And how you can use either a combination or individually these to make some really cool customized um, execution flows. So we're going to go over what the difference between them are, how to be able to use them, and different ways that you can kind of call them in other blueprints as well. So we're going to be working out of the same tutorial project that we have out of previous videos, just like always. Um, however, I will say this might change in some videos upcoming, uh, just because at this point, I some videos I might want to just get specific to that. So I don't know if I'll continue using this, but we'll, we'll see what happens as things develop. All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is custom events versus preset events. So what is the difference? Well, the first thing is, is we'll open up our blueprint here for our BP third person character. Now, a preset event, <clears throat> excuse me, is an event that's already lined in the game. So if I type an event, you'll see. So we have event begin play, event destroyed, event end play, on landed, on launched, on crouch, all these different options here. So these are all the preset events. We had touch input, mouse input, you know, on damage, on collision. So there's a ton that we can use here and each one operates differently. And these are great as an execution for when to start different things. So like when something is hit, so if like if you run into a wall, you know, if you get damaged, if you, you know, get shot or take a hit of any kind, you know, these are all how you would use to be able, uh, you would use these to be able to create certain custom events, um, you know, for triggers. So that is what a preset event is. Now we're going to talk a little bit about custom events. So I'm going to right click here and we're going to type in custom event. And we're going to click on add custom event. Now a custom event allows you to be able to control exactly what is going on and it can be called anywhere within your blueprint. So if I look, if you look over here, we have a few different options. First thing to note is the graph node and then name. So we're going to start off with something simple. Um, I'll create a simple print screen. Uh, we'll control it through a Boolean and we'll do some cool stuff. So for name, we're going to call this show me things. Oops, apparently it's already created. I did a little bit of a test on this. So uh, we're going to go show me stats you guys i always like to test things before i make the video so sometimes it does cause some issues with names um all right so show me stats and now what we want to do off of show me stats is we're gonna drag off the execution pin we're gonna get a sequence node and then off of that sequence node we're gonna get off of then one we're gonna go a print string we'll take it and we'll duplicate it we'll get two print strings in there and now we just need some information for it to print so we'll get our mesh and our character movement component. Off of the mesh, we'll just get the world location. And we'll plug that into the print string in string section. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll drag this up, try to how to rewrote node here, just to try and tidy things up just a little bit. Perfect. All right, so now off of then one, we'll drag in the other print string off of character movement. We'll type in get velocity. And we'll do this get velocity. Drag this back, take these, bring it closer, and plug it into here. All right. So now we have an execute. We have a uh, custom event, and we have we're telling it this is what we want you to do when you launch. However, this isn't going to launch by default because there's nothing uh, that's happening to create when you want it to do things. So now you can code and put a bunch of other things and make it do things through uh, C++. However, we're just going to look at the standard blueprint style. Now, I also want to point out here, you can add in inputs, which is really, really helpful. We're not going to use inputs right now, but this is really nice when you're using custom events. So now what we want to do, though, is we want to be able to create a Boolean or some information for it to launch off of. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do event tick and we're we'll an event tick so this is every single frame this is going to run whatever we're telling it to do then off of event tick we're going to type in branch now we want to set a condition for this branch so i'm going to do a simple uh moving uh code so that way we can just basically if we're moving it'll allow us to do it if we're not moving it won't so what we'll need for that is the character movement component <clears throat> excuse me and off of the character movement component, we're going to drag off, get velocity, 
if I can type right. And then from velocity, we're going to do vector length. Vector length xy. And then vector length xy, we're going to go greater get a greater sig uh, greater node it will put greater than three and then back off of the character movement component we're going to get current acceleration and then off of the get current acceleration we're just going to go not equal just like that we're going to leave it at zero and then we're going to connect these two together utilizing an and bool so this is just a simple if we're moving or not moving code line if you guys watch my uh, tutorial on how to be able to set up an animation blueprint, you guys are probably familiar with this. All right, and then off at the end of the end, we're just going to drag it off, promote it to a variable, and then type in move it. So this is just a very simple uh, Boolean uh, code line. So this is basically just going to say if we're moving or not. But I already have this Boolean here, so I'm actually just going to delete this one. Um, actually, you know what? I'll delete this one because this one's not in use. So I can just take this one and move it. All right, so now we have our moving variable. So what we're going to do is off of event tick, we're going to drag this. So we're actually going to take this branch off. So what we're going to do is event tick is going to constantly set if we are moving or not moving. Whoops, I'm just going to take it and drag it down out of the way. All right, so now what we're going to do off of the show me stats section, we're going to drag this back, go off the execution pin, type in branch, because this is where we actually wanted the branch. I put it in the wrong spot. Um, and then off of the condition, we'll type in moving. So we'll get moving. So if we are moving, it'll allow us to be able to run this code. If we are not moving, it will not allow us to run this code. Now, we also need to make sure that we're telling it to actually run, because right now we're just giving it a Boolean and giving it the end, but we need the middle. So this is where we're gonna go right click and we're gonna go keyboard event G. And then when pressed, we'll type show me stats, boom. So every time we press G, so now it's calling this custom event. So this is where custom events versus preset events are a little bit different. So preset events, as you can see here with like event tick, this is already set up to run off of a certain function. So when you have event tick, you're just going to be calling event tick. There's no way to call a secondary copy of it to have it run additional uh, code lines. But custom events allow you to be able to create preset areas and then call them off of different functions. So like as we have here, we have the show me stats custom event, which is going to be running as long as we are moving. If we are moving, then it'll run the sequence node and do the double print string here. However, if we are not moving, it'll still run. It'll still run to this code here, but it won't go past. So you could also put a branch here, I guess, I suppose, on the G key to make it so it doesn't run this. But essentially, all you need to know is when you call it off of an execution line like this, it's going to be uh, running it from here. So if you put anything after, it'll just run whatever you put after and then including this line. So just to kind of show you what I mean here, if I hit compile and save, and then I hit play, minimize here. So if I'm standing still and I hit G, nothing happens. But if I move forward and press G, now we're getting our velocity and our character's current world position, which is constantly changing and adjusting based off of wherever we are. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's how you would basically do that. Now, I'm only using the event tick to be able to set the moving variable because I don't have a variable to currently work off of, so I'm just using that more as an example. However, you can use any variable that you want um, to be able to make this work. So this is just a basic example of being able to create, using a variable to create, uh, sorry, to be able to create the stop and go of the execution line on your custom event. So... I hope you guys are still with me. I know that was a lot. We're going to keep moving on. Um, but So that's the basic difference between custom events and preset events. So now one thing to keep in mind whenever you're using custom events, we're going to go back and take a look at these inputs now. So if we go ahead and add an input here, what we're going to do is we are going to add a integer boolean. I'm sorry, an integer input. All right. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to go off of new param. We're going to type in number. Because I honestly am not creative enough to be able to come up with something better. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in down here. I'm going to get integer. Do, do, do. We'll just type random random integer. All right, so we'll get a maximum of, let's say, I don't know, 50. Or, yeah, 560, sure. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into the number value here. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this, drag this print string out, click on add pin on sequence, drag this out, and put another print string in. Because now what we can do is we can actually call information from here in this custom event now because we created the input on here we've added an input into it and now we've all, we've created somewhere for it to actually use that information so if i go ahead and compile and save click on play just like before if i press g like i am right now then nothing is happening but if i move press g now it's picking a number anywhere random between zero and fifty as well as showing me my current location and my velocity. So this is a really great way to be able to create some really cool, uh, I guess, flow between different areas of your code. And you don't actually have to keep it like all clustered together. You can use custom events to be able to actually call things inside of your graph. Now, another cool thing that you can do with custom events is you can make them work within other functions. So for example, if I, we'll just go to another area of the screen here. And we're going to do, we're going to right click and we're going to go custom event. Uh, we're going to take this event and we'll just type uh, do something. All right, so and then off of this, we'll just leave that blank for right now. But now what we can do though is if we compile and save, we can minimize. And we can go to, let's say, we'll go to playable character, BPs, and we'll go to the animation blueprint. Now, if we go to the event graph here, what we'll do is we'll go off of the getter node for our blueprint update animation. So this is the, uh, this was just created in the, uh, how to be able to create a blueprint animation basics. So if you know if you this don't know how to make any of this go ahead and watch that video i tried to make sure to explain everything as detailed as possible but off of the character reference section what we're actually going to want to do is actually we'll pull out from here we're going to get it we're going to drag off and then we're going to type do something boom so now we have called our custom event inside of our anim graph so now what we can do is let's say so let's take a look at one of our animations. So we're going to go playable character, animations. Uh, we'll go for run. And look at our blend space for our run. All right, so we got the ALS run forward retargeted, I believe is what we're using. So if I go and open that up really quickly... Actually, you know what? I can double check what we're using in this. So you always want to make sure that you're using the correct uh, animation because what we're going to be doing is adding an anim notify. And what an anim notify does, there we go, ground locomotion, is it allows us to be able to uh, call events at certain points in an animation. So if we go to the run here, yep, ALS run forward retargeted. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to open the asset. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring it back a little bit and I don't know, we'll just go like halfway here. We're going to go to the notifies track, right click and add a notify. We're going to add a new notify and we're going to call this do something. All right. So we'll have it right there. So now what we'll do is we'll save that, go back to our anim graph and we'll go to the event graph of that. And now we're going to right click, anim, notify, do something. All right, so we can go here, 
plug that into there. So now what's happening is we're calling the do something, <clears throat> excuse me, the do something uh, custom event that we've created in the actual blueprint for the first per, uh, third person character. And then we're having it actually trigger when we're halfway through each of our run cycles. So now if I go back here and I do, let's see, do I have any particle or anything animations in here? Let's see. Starter content, I think, has some things. Particles. Yeah, so here's what we'll do. We'll use the P explosion. So what we'll do is we'll go here, third person character, add particle system component. Nope, not that one. I apologize. <laughs> Play our spawn emitter, I believe it is. I always get all of this mixed up because there's so much spawn emitter allocation. All right, so there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our emitter, we're gonna look for explosion, and then we're gonna take our mesh, and we're gonna plug Oh, wait, sorry. We're going to take the mesh, drag back, drag out, get world location. And then we're going to plug this into the location. And then we're also going to drag the mesh out, get world rotation. And we're going to plug this into the rotation. And we're going to leave the scale as it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compile, save. And now if I hit play... There's an explosion playing under his feet every single time. Because that at that point in the animation, it's calling the custom event to play the Anim Notify. So using Anim Notifies and custom events together are amazing ways to be able to create some really cool detailed visual effects. And, you know, it's a consistent control, so it's really, really nice to actually have some really nice detail. So but that's pretty much the basics on how to be able to utilize the custom events versus the preset events. I'm going to do a little bit more detail on some of the preset events because if we go back here and just bring up the list, there is a lot. Um, just go up from the top here, you know. Um, so we're not going to go over too much of these on um, this video, but... If you guys have any questions about a specific action event or a specific custom event style that you want to make, uh, feel free to leave uh, me a question in the comments. You know, I can maybe do a video on how to be able to set that type of system up. So please feel free to give me some suggestions. Um, but we do have more blueprint sections that are going to be coming out soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was informative. And as always, stay animated.